Hi everyone, it's Aaron here from Pi Supply, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at the Just Boom Amp Zero. The Just Boom Amp Zero is an amplifier designed for the Raspberry Pi Zero, as the name suggests. It provides a 2x40 watt stereo output to any passive speakers. It will work with the larger Raspberry Pis, but the actual mechanical size is designed to be the same size as the Raspberry Pi Zero. So we recommend it for use with that. And if you're using the bigger pies, we recommend that you go with the amp hat. It gives you a bit more power output and also is just a much better size and it fits much, nice, much more nicely on, on the actual pie itself. So let's take a look at the amp zero. So you can see we've got quite a few bits and bobs in here, um, a few flyers and stuff some hardware and the board itself. So um, let's take a look at what we got. So we got the um, Max 2 Play vouchers here. So if you don't know Max 2 Play, it's basically an audio file, um, multi-room audio solution um, that allows you to that works with the Raspberry Pi. So if you're using the Amp Zero, you can really easily use this software to control it. And you can also control it in multiple rooms from one software interface. Um, so it's a really good bit of software. And, and this um, license code that you get here for free as well um, it includes 30 days of free usage, just so you can get a feel for what the software does before you know actually making a purchase. And then you've just got some like sort of getting started guide info there as well. So um, should be pretty useful. Um, you've got a very similar thing for Rune. So Rune, again, it's like a multi, um, multi room audio software for high resolution audio. It ties in with Tidal and, and some other services like that that provide high, high quality audio streams. And again, you've got a 60 day license code on there for free, um, just to allow you to kind of get a feel for it before you have to pay any money out. Um, We've then got the Just Boom card. Um, oops, drop that a bit there. Um, it's got the getting started um, domain name there, which is justboom.co forward slash start. Um, just, we've got like written versions of these, um, of like all our tutorials, everything like that. We've got some videos of all that as well, but if you wanna, if you prefer to sort of have like picture and, and written guides, that's all on there as well. And just how to do stuff with software and everything like that. So definitely worth taking a look there. Um, and then we've got the Just Boom stickers. So you can stick those wherever you want, on your bedroom door, on your laptop, whatever. And if you do, make sure you tweet as a picture because we love to see that kind of thing. And then, as I said, we've got the mounting hardware. Um, this is um, for use, like mounting it to the Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, and various other things. We'll get to that later. Um, and then we've got the main board. So this is just an anti-static bag. We'll pop that out there. Um, and then we've got the board. So you can see it's quite a, quite a packed board, quite full of components there. Um, mainly because they're all on the top side and on the underside, there's, there's nothing. And, and the reason for that is that it sits really close to the Raspberry Pi. Um, so when, you're, when, you, when we put it on in a minute, um, you'll see that it, it sits probably only about two and a half, three mil from the board. I, I can't remember the exact, maybe it's three or four, <laughs> I'm not sure, but it, it sits very close to the board. So you'll see that in a second. So yeah, let's take a look at the board. I'll show you some of the key components on the board. Um, and then once that's done, we'll just assemble it to the Raspberry Pi Zero and you can just see how, um, how to do that. So. Um, so you can see the main chip here. This is the main Texas Instruments amplifier chip. So that's got um, a built-in digital to analog converter. Um, and then it's got the, the amplifier on there as well. And in the configuration, we've got it on the Amp Zero. That will do two um, channel 40 watt peak um, in that configuration. The chip itself can go up to, I believe, 55 watts peak but um, due to the size and the heat dissipation that you can achieve on, on that small board, we, um, you can't, we've kind of restricted it to 40 watts max. So um, you can't really go over that um, per channel. Um, so yeah, that, that's the main chip. Um, you've got some um, capacitors, big capacitors there for smoothing, some um, coils here, and then 
you've basically got a load of supporting um, circuitry. So you've got some um, power supply circuitry here, um, which um, is for the power input. So the power input on this board is eight to 16 volts. So when you plug in the power onto this power supply, if you've got the Pi Zero on top, uh, underneath it, then you only need the one power supply. So you just plug in one power supply into here and it back powers the Raspberry Pi Zero over the GPIO port. So you don't have to have two power supplies, one to power the Pi Zero and one to power this. So it just keeps it nice and neat um, and clean really. So, um, and also just make sure that the power is like a really clean power coming to the board. Um, just helps with the audio quality a bit and to reduce interference. So, um, so that's all there. Um, so the main output connector, um, you can see here. So that connector is um, for the speaker output. Um, as I said, you could connect um, passive speakers to that. Um, you'd be looking at four or eight ohm speakers to go into there. Um, and as I said, the 40 watt max is, is the output. So you probably want to look for something slightly above the 40 watt max, just so that you've got some extra headroom there on the speaker side. Um, and yeah, as I say, I think that can take up to 14 AWG wire. Um, you could probably fit 12 AWG into the actual holes, but it would probably be a bit um, squished when you're actually trying to get it with the, um, the cable, uh, the actual outer cable um, shielding what will clash, so it'll be quite hard to fit in. So we recommend normally 14 AWG and that is enough for the power output. So um, there's no real need to go any higher than that um, at all. So yeah, so that, that's really the main components. The only last one is obviously the 40 pin header um, at the top here, but I'm guessing for most of you who've seen a Raspberry Pi before, you kind of knew what that was already. So, um, so yeah, that, that's really the board. Um, why don't we take a look at the Raspberry Pi and getting that mounted with the mounting hardware and then we'll take a look at a few other bits and bobs that you can do with it um, before then. So we'll grab a Pi Zero. So we've got the Pi Zero W here. Um, it will work with any Pi, as I said. So you could use a Pi 4, Pi 3, but obviously the size is exactly the same as the Pi Zero um, out, um, shape. And so it just works better. And we normally go for the Pi Zero W just because it's got that extra um, Wi-Fi um, and Bluetooth capability. So for like an audio device, it just makes it that little, it gives it that little bit of edge over the Pi Zero uh, for not much extra price. So highly recommend getting that one. Um, so yeah, inside the, the little Ziploc bag, we've got quite a few bits. So um, this is a power adapter. Uh, well, I'll, I'll speak about that in a minute. So I'll just put that to one side. Um, then we've got this, which is an infrared um, input uh, receiver for the, for the board. So actually, before I mount on the Raspberry Pi, I'll just quickly show you that because it's got the long legs, it, it's easier. So um, you'll see at the bottom here, there's a three pin, there's three holes in the board, three pin sort of header there. Now that's designed for this um, TSOP IR receiver. So you can just basically pop that into the holes. They line up um, accurately with that. And you want to make sure that when you've got them in the holes, the sort of um, semi-spherical um, bump on the front of the receiver, you want that facing towards the edge of the board, so out of the board. Um, so you just pop that in like that uh, and just push it down to the bottom, facing out. And then what you would do is you'd just solder those, you'd solder those legs into the bottom there, just, just so they're not, just so they're secure, have a good connection. Um, so we, we are going to do a tutorial um, uh, for soldering um, stuff onto the, onto all of the just Boom boards. So there's various different boards which can accept a IR header and there's a few which have different um, like RCA outputs and stuff that you can pop it onto them. So um, We'll, we'll cover that in another tutorial in more detail, how to solder that and everything. So I'll pop that to one side as well for now. Um, so yeah, the, as I said, the Pi Zero and um, the, the Amp Zero, they've got the 40 pin header um, 
it's pretty easy with this one to know which way to put it around because you actually can't fit it upside down because <laughs> the capacitors get in the way. But um, just so you know, the blank underside is the side that wants to be connecting to the Raspberry Pi. So you want it um, to connect like so. And so once, once you've got the two boards, just make sure you line the pins up nice, nicely and correctly. Um, and you can push them in to each other. Now, I normally grab the two corners and push them in. You, you can do this without the mounting hardware, but we do recommend that you have the mounting hardware in there just because it keeps a good distance between the two boards um, and, and just allows you to not get any short circuits or anything. Um, so I'll first put the mounting hardware onto the Raspberry Pi, attach the board, and then we can secure it all in place. So I'll just show you that now. It's much easier, um, well, I prefer when I do it to put the mounting hardware onto the Raspberry Pi first, um, then stick the Amp Zero on top, and then secure it all in place. I find it a little bit easier to do it that way than um, any other kind of way, just personal preference. If you get it all attached, you get it all attached, so it doesn't really make a difference. So um, what I would normally do is grab one of the screws um, and stick that into the bottom um, of the Raspberry Pi Zero. Then just by hand, you can grab one of the mounting posts, which are the little, uh, they look like just kind of quite thick nuts, basically. Um, you just pop that onto the screw. It's a bit fiddly, but once you get, get it threaded, the first couple of threads, it's quite easy. And then you can just spin it around by hand like that. Just do it up by hand for, for now, because we'll, as I said, we'll tighten it all up at the end. Um, so just repeat the same thing with all the others. So there we go. So we've got that all on, on the Pi Zero there. Um, as I said, line up the pins, get that popped on top. You can see that's uh, on top there. And then just give it a good push so it gets a good connection on the header there. Um, you'll see there's a small gap in the pins there. Um, but it, it doesn't matter. Once we get it screwed in um, nice and tight, it will, make, it will make a good connection on that header. So you don't need to worry about that at all. Um, so then we've got the four uh, other screws here. Um, so we can just basically grab a screwdriver. Um, the screws are the standard um, M2.5. So all of the Raspberry Pis, Pi Zero or, or the full size Pis, the holes in, in the board are all M2.5. So all of the mounting hardware that we have will be that. So um, if you lose the screws or anything like that, they're quite easy to get hold of on. Um, eBay, Amazon, that kind of place. Just search for M2.5. Um, we've got the specs of the actual size of the screws on, on the website. So take a look at that justboom.co forward slash start page if, if you need anything like that. Or if you're looking to kind of integrate it into a project where you need some different kind of sizes. Um, but yeah, just get those screwed in. They don't need to be super tight, but just get them hand tight. Um, you know, if, if you do them up too tight, you probably will be um, actually damaging the board and stuff. So just get them you know, nice and secure, but not too tight. And as you can see, I'd recommend the magnetic um, screwdriver just because they are quite small and fiddly. So it, it does help to have a, um, a magnetic one. So those are all tightly in the top there now. So now we'll just flip it over. And where we did these ones up by hand previously, um, we'll just get them nice and tight with the screwdriver and then, and then we'll be good to go. So. Okay, so that's the, that's the finished, finished article you can see there. And that's really it. So now, as I said, all, all you need to do is um, pop an SD card in. Um, the Amp Zero is compatible with Raspberry and Noobs. The drivers and um, device tree overlays and all that kind of stuff is all in uh, Noobs natively. Um, so it's very easy to get that all up and running. Um, as I said, there's loads of guides on the website at the link. Um, we'll put the link, all the links and information in the uh, description of the video. So just take a look there um, and you'll find all the info you need to get started. Um, but yeah, it's compatible with Rune, Max 2 Play. Those are obviously like more audio file distributions. Um, there's um, free alternatives such as Just Boom Player. Um, and Volumio and a few others. And then if you're kind of looking more for a like home cinema setup, 
There's um, OSMC um, and LibreELEC. Um, again, they should work on all versions of, of the Raspberry Pi, so um, the zero will easily be covered. So you can just pop that on the SD card, get that inserted. And then, as I said, you only need the one power supply. Um, again, the power supply info, that's all available on the website. Um, the power input has to be eight to 16 volts. With the Amp Zero, we normally recommend a 15 volt power supply. Um, they just tend to be the most widely available in that range and also give you the best um, power output and also give you access to the, the four or eight ohm speakers. Um, we have got a web page which you can access from that justboom.co forward slash start, which has the um, it's called Amp Zero, uh, the Amp Power Supply Specifications. Now that'll tell you exactly um, what spec of power supply you can get. And it also has links to the power supplies on our website, um, which you can um, which will work perfectly with it. So we you know we'd recommend that you know we obviously recommend that you buy the one from us because we know it definitely works but if if it's difficult to ship to your country from the uk or if you know you just rather buy it locally we have got um, a guide available and if you need any other help with the power supply stuff just give us a shout i think we're also going to do a video about power supplies um so we'll we'll chuck that link in the in the um, description so yeah just take a look at that um, the last bit that i haven't shown you is this little little adapter here so the reason for this is that the um, power supply connector on the Amp Zero is, uh, I think it's a 1.7 mil um, DC jack, which is a bit uncommon. I think it's only really used in like some Dell laptops maybe, I can't remember the exact brand, but Dell or Toshiba or something like that use this connector for some of their smaller laptops. Um, so so we've, we've spec'd that out, but because it's hard to come by, you can't find that many power supplies with that connector. So what we've done is we've given this um, 1.7 mil connector and then on the other side, it's a standard 2.5 um, mil uh, DC jack connector, much more uh, widely available. So you might even have a power supply in your home that works with, with that size because it is quite a common one for a wide variety of electronics. Um, so we just provide that adapter because for a lot of people, you're actually probably going to want to use that um, and, and then you'll be able to get a power supply much cheaper. Um, you know, if you've got a power supply lying around the, the home, which has got that same connector, just make sure it's between that eight to 16 volts and just make sure you check, check that page on our website where it tells you um, what power output you're going to get and whether it will um, be enough power to kind of power the Amp Zero and the Pi at the same time. So yeah, just, just check that out before you, before you plug anything in. It just saves the hassle of damaging the board or anything like that with the wrong power supply. So yeah, that's pretty much the Amp Zero. So yeah, thanks for watching and yeah, we'll catch you in the next video.